What up friends, today I'm gonna paint an abstract painting for you. What up friends, Liron here, thank you for joining me in another video. In today's video I'm gonna do something a little different, um, you haven't seen me do too much of this, but if you've been following me on Snapchat and Instagram, you saw how I'm slowly getting into more abstract art. Now the way I approach this, I like my abstract art to be rooted in a lot of complexity in terms of three dimensionality, so uh, the, the shapes I focus on right now are cubes, and I'm really trying to make it complex, um, so this is a good example of just a sketch uh, of me planning out uh, what I want to do with this idea and I'm really playing around with the pattern uh, trying to uh, add some perspective to it so that it feels maybe a little even panoramic um, and I'm, I'm basically gonna take this one and develop it uh, into a full-fledged painting okay um, here you have a few more sketches uh, that I did to get ready for this um, and the idea really is to create something that is abstract on the one hand but also uh, very rooted in uh, a bit of a three-dimensional three-dimensional complexity, okay? And I'm gonna talk a little more about um, modern art and abstract art in the video while narrating the process, okay? So let's change the angle and get started. So as always, I start with a drawing. Um, now, what I'm doing here is setting up some guidelines, okay? The lines I'm putting in right now, I'm not necessarily gonna use as is, uh, but this will help me create a grid that will help me know where to put my cubes, where to put my uh, objects and what they will look like, okay? So basically what I'm doing is setting up a two-point perspective. Uh, there, in two-point perspective, there's two vanishing points, one on the right, one on the left usually. Um, and what I'm doing now is freehanding it. I'm not actually using a point that I placed somewhere. I'm just doing this for my imagination. Uh, this requires some experience to get the right um, and accurate enough of a result. Uh, I'm basically just tilting the, the ruler a bit more as I go along. So starting with almost a, a horizontal line and then I'm just rotating it as I go along. Okay, so it does require a bit of experience. Uh, you don't have to do it that way. You can actually draw two points outside of the, the, the paper or the canvas you're using. Um, but in any case, this is only to create a grid that will help me. So now that I have the grid, uh, I'm looking for the easiest spot for me to simply drop a cube, okay? So somewhere around the middle, uh, there's this nice square going on there that I can use. So I'm just dropping uh, a line. Uh, this line is uh, vertical. Uh, and now I'm just following the grid, okay? So basically when I draw the side of the cube, I'm following the grid that I already created and doing lines that are parallel to to the grid, the existing grid. Now, um, <clears throat> what I'm doing is looking for the average between the two lines I'm at. Uh, okay, so this is, it takes some time to develop a feel for it, uh, but you see me really following the, the two sets of, uh, of lines that converge each to a different point. And once I have that first cube, I'm just uh, continuing, uh, doing the same thing and putting another cube right below it to the left. Uh, so basically I'm creating a steps pattern, okay? Now the video is gonna run at different speeds depending on what I do because I don't want to bore you and it's uh, just by its nature it's a very repetitive process uh, because of what I'm drawing which is a repetitive pattern. Um, so now we're at about three, three times the original speed, okay? Um, and I'm just adding these stairs in uh, using the existing lines to put them in. Um, now on the left uh, in a moment now, I'll, I'll indicate uh, another step like this, what I'm doing right now, um, that is sort of near the existing uh, steps that I created, okay? Uh, you really have to study this pattern, and it's not a necessarily a step-by-step -step lesson. Uh, if you want me to, to explain more how I produce this pattern, let me know and I'll do something that's more real-time narrated. <clears throat> My point with this video is for you to see the entire process leading from the sketch I did to this final painting, okay? So now that I have all of the sort of steps or blocks or cubes in place, I'm starting to prepare some yellow color. The color I'm using here is the Indian yellow. Notice how it was a bit contaminated in the beginning, but the more I clean it up with clear water, the more clear it is, okay? So basically I'm covering the entire canvas. And the reason why uh, is that later on I'm, I'm gonna come back with uh, some darker colors and, and mixtures and put in the shadows. But for now all I want is just to put 
um, one sort of wash that's that's becoming a little darker the lower it goes. Okay, so I'm adding a bit of the perlin dark red uh, the lower it goes and creating this interesting orange um, value there. Okay, filling on in all those small gaps due to the paper's uh, texture. By the way, I'm using a rough paper. I'm using the uh, Saunders Waterford rough paper, uh, but on the smooth side, and still you can feel the texture. So I, I was caught by surprise when doing this. Really, uh, here you can see some of the sketch that I that I sketches that I made in preparation of this, and I'm just trying out the reds to see which one I think will work best. So now I'm going to add a bit more water to it. Uh, because I need a, a larger quantity, so I'm adding just more water, more paint, until I get the consistency I want. Now, basically what I'm doing is painting around the highlights. And the highlights here, for me, the light source first comes from above. So the top sides of the cubes are going to be left uh, yellow. This is why I covered the entire paper, because it doesn't really matter. I then come back with another wash, and then another one, and another one. Um, so right now I'm just painting around those highlights um, that are the top sides of the cube. I'm going to do the exact same thing for the next row, and I'm trying to connect and merge washes where I can, okay? So I'm not going to paint each side of each cube individually, that's ridiculous. I'm just going to go ahead and, and cover it all in one go. It's quicker, it looks better, and this is what watercolor is all about, the, the way they flow. Um, you saw me earlier just dabbing some, uh, I, I just made a mistake, went outside of the lines, um, Sometimes these mistakes won't be as critical, but uh, in this particular case, I wanted to, to fix that. Okay, so now the video speeds up just a little bit. I think it's going to be 10 times faster in, in just a moment, yes. So here you can see some more of the process, and I'm skipping a lot of the things because, again, it's really repetitive. Uh, so once you get the gist of every step, I kind of like to uh, kick it into the next one. So now basically just covering all of the lower parts of the cubes. Now I'm indicating where I want the shadows to be because each cube casts a shadow onto the one under it, okay? Now if you want me to dive deeper in, on each step, I can do a more narrated version of this uh, with maybe a small pen sketch or something like this, so let me know, okay? Uh, but now I want to show you the entire process. So now I'm adding the almost darkest shadows in this um, in this pic in this painting. And notice how um, I'm trying to make use of the watercolors transparency. Okay, this is not opaque. This is not an, an abstract painting in oil or something like this. Okay, this is really should uh, bring out the best in watercolor. Okay, so this is my goal with this. And I'm speeding up a bit, showing you some more of these shadows. Um, I do want to talk a bit about the direction I'm taking, so I'm trying out some abstract art. Now, I don't want to argue on the definition of abstract, but I see this as abstract. It is rooted in some reality, because it's based on a, a real shape, a cube. Uh, it doesn't really matter to me, like the semantics, but this is at least how I, what I call uh, abstract art, and I'm really enjoying this, and the more I dive deeper into it, the more I see how there's a lot of thought behind abstract art in general. Uh, so I'm, I'm becoming, uh, in modern art, and I'm becoming really impressed with, with uh, the, the results that people achieve, and I'm starting to really appreciate it. Um, what I want to do uh, with my style is to have it rooted in some complexity, uh, and a feeling of three-dimensionality, okay? So I'm less about putting stains on the paper. I actually want it to look like um, like uh, maybe cubes or pyramids or stuff like that, like really three-dimensional stuff. Uh, so this is what I'm going for here. So now I'm trying to add the darkest shadows, and I'm trying to put in some paint and then uh, blend it, and I find that it didn't work for me. So I just dabbed everything, and I'm just going to do it wet and wet. Uh, for the next painting, I'll know to do it as soon as I put in the blue, I'll just put in the sepia as well. So what I'm doing now is just I'm going to wet the surface um, with a brush and then come back with the paint and you see it sort of blends in there. Um, now the thing is I should wait a little longer for the, the water to dry a bit. So what I'm improving on the next try is I'm wetting a few areas, then I'm going to the first one and back to the first one and then putting in the uh, the sepia. You'll see me doing this in just a moment. And now you can start feeling really um, a, some sense of depth and a bit more of the three-dimensionality of the shapes we're looking at. And this is really what I'm after. Uh, this is the thing I enjoy the most. I want it to be rooted in something that's realistic, uh, something that's very complex. I love the shape of a cube, so this is kind of a series I want to work on of paintings. So you see here I'm wetting 
uh, I will wetted, pre-wetted a few of the areas and then I'm putting in that uh, sepia into them. And this is basically almost done. Uh, the painting is really, really near its end. And I want to show you the final result. Uh, here it is. And if you want me to dive deeper in, on each step, let me know. Okay, so I'm done here. I just want to show you uh, what it looks like when I remove the tape. Um, so here we have clean edges, which I like a lot. Now let's take all of it off. And you can see this is what it should look like uh, when you're done. And I just love the way it looks with the clean edges. Um, I just want to show you a bit zoomed in so you can see all of the details um, of the shadowy areas and the wet and wet and just seeing how the shadows cast from one cube onto another. Um, so really, really an interesting kind of uh, work uh, that I want to develop and add some more uh, elements to it. Uh, maybe play around with the perspective a little more, make it a little more interesting. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed it. Let's change the angle and wrap this video up. So friends, I hope you enjoyed this process. Here's again the final result. Uh, I learned quite a bit from this one. Um, I'm gonna use this for the thumbnail of the video. So anyway, I learned quite a bit from this uh, from this uh, painting and uh, it really just to think that it developed from this small idea, okay? Um, and I learned, for example, about how to apply the wet and wet here. Um, so there are a few things I'll probably change around. Ultimately, I plan to have this double size, so somewhere around like double this size. Um, this is an eighth, uh, this is a quarter sheet, I believe. Or maybe an eighth, I'm not sure. This could be an eighth of a sheet. Uh, so I'll, I'll raise it up one more. Um, so this is my ultimate plan. I hope you enjoyed this one. Again, uh, it's less of let's talk about every single thing I do and more about recognizing the pattern, setting up the light source, uh, deciding on the color palette, which is again the one that I use for my uh, new primaries, the happy primary video, uh, which I really, really am starting to like. Uh, so anyway, I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you learned something new. Don't forget to subscribe here on YouTube and follow me on Instagram and Snapchat where I share tons of updates of works in progress like this one. And I will see you again really soon.